In this video, I will show you the basic editing controls of Nitro. You enter edit by clicking on the first control in the right bar. At the top is shot information, including the file format. You can expand it to see more metadata. The next area is the histogram. You can close it if you want more working space. Below that are the editing controls. They're organized in the order in which you would normally process an image. The first set of controls are called quick fixes. These are ways to make quick improvements to your image. There's auto enhance to quickly improve an image, highlight recovery, a spot and wire removal feature, and cloning. I'll quickly show you auto enhance, an intensity slider that lets you control the amount of the auto enhance, and just click this button. You can click this control to see the image before and after. At the bottom are controls to copy and paste adjustments and reset. When I pick copy, I get to choose which adjustments to include. The same goes for when I paste. Next is highlight recovery, which helps you bring back detail and raw images very quickly. This is an image before highlight recovery and a few other changes I made, and this is after. You can see a lot more detail in the clouds. Next up is cloning. Cloning lets you copy pixels from one part of the image to another to make fixes or repairs. This is an image with clone before and after. The areas here and here have been removed. In addition to the quick fixes, there are also presets and LUTs. Presets let you quickly apply multiple adjustments to an image, and LUTs help you quickly apply a certain type of feel or look to your image. For example, in this image, I might try something like an earth tone look. In addition, there are film simulations inspired by Fujifilm simulations, and I can quickly jump through those and some other ones as well. Next up are the sliders for detailed adjustments. There's a large number of them that come with the application. I won't go through all of them, I'll just highlight a few. The tone adjustment gives you special controls over pro-raw files, regular raws, and non-raws as well. Raw tuning gives you some unique controls over Apple's raw decoder. HSL lets you adjust images by hue, saturation, or luminous independently. And there's a custom hue selector as well. Black and white gives you a bunch of black and white options. Split toning lets you adjust images by their highlights or shadows. There's control over chromatic aberration and fringe. Lens distortion which allows you to correct for lens artifacts. In addition, the app will learn as you correct distortions for your camera, so eventually it can actually correct them automatically. Perspective, a color mixer, and a vignette. For the vignette, you can actually control what the center point is as well. Last but not least is masking. Masking is a very powerful feature in Nitro. You can add multiple kinds of masks. You can brush, add gradients, and also there are AI-based masks to identify the subject or the background of an image. Any mask that you create can be brushed, so you can take a linear gradient or a subject mask and apply brush strokes to it. This is an AI subject mask of Santa. Not only are there many different types of masks, but you can apply a wide range of adjustments to them. Almost every adjustment that you saw in the previous section of sliders can be applied to a mask, including white balance, levels, curves, HSL, and chromatic aberration. Brushes let you control the size of the brush, how strong it is, softness, and there's even an edge aware brushing feature. For this image, I used an AI mask, brushing, edge aware, and cloning, and then the result is a much nicer, cleaner image.
Let me show you an example of EdgeAware brushing. I'll start by making a brush mask. In this image, I might want to work on the sky, but it will be a lot of work to manually mask out the rider and the grass. I'll turn on EdgeAware brushing. I can even have a pretty large brush. What I do is I just brush straight across, right through the rider. Then I could turn off EdgeAware and just finish up the rest of the sky area. And I'm done. I can use something like Deepen to work on the sky. Or I can actually invert the mask. To invert the mask, I click on the brush and pick Invert. Now I've got the rider and the grass. Then I can use midtones to change the field of the foreground before and after. Edits are saved automatically by the application. If you're using the Finder, it saves them to an XMP file. If you're using the photo library, it saves them directly to the photo library. A great feature in Nitro is the ability to move edits between those two systems. So you can edit an image in the photo library and export the edits as an XMP file to the Finder. Or if you edit in the Finder, you can store the edits into the photo library directly, and then they get synced over iCloud Photo Library. And that's a tour of editing in Nitro. Thanks for watching.